panda bears in China, orangutans in Borneo, rhinos in East Africa, whales in the Arctic, cod in the Irish Sea, even red kites on the M40. What do they all have in common? They're all species that have been studied and with a can-do attitude, a plan, working together, using an evidence-based approach and having a clear sense of direction, their decline has been understood. They've not necessarily been saved, but enough is now known about them to put in place programs to improve their populations. So, let's approach the trend of the reversing the trend of declining wild salmon stocks with a bit of optimism, a bit of enthusiasm, a bit of drive, a bit of determination. Not to take action would be a travesty. The Missing Salmon Alliance is not about keeping calm and carrying on. It's about doing things now and taking action. One of the problems we face, in fact a huge problem, unfortunately the people in here don't suffer from this because you're here, is human being apathy. Have you heard of those in the salmon world say, it's down to climate change, all the problems out at sea, it's the marine environment, it's all part of the cycle. Stop them, stop them, ask for the solutions, not problems. With the right attitude, the right people in place, the right plan, we can make a difference. Sure, the problem probably is climate change. It probably is out at sea. It is probably part of the cycle. But what can we do about it? In fact, what do we need to do about it? Of course we can't reverse climate change, but there is lots, as you've heard this morning, from speaker after speaker, that we can do. Let's do it. The second thing we have is to work together. The Missing Simon, Salmon Alliance, and I have to say, and I, if you give him a round of applause, David Mayhew has driven this thing through and has done an amazing job by bringing us all together. The problem before was we were all disparate. We were working in silos. We've now got the AST, AST and the GWCT working on the evidence and the science. We got the S&TC working on lobbying people, and they have done an amazing job with aquaculture, and they have upset people. But once we get them onto the suspect framework, by Christ, they're going to cause some difference. And then we've got the Angling Trust, and the Angling Trust have got a huge reach out there, and they can make a difference to make things happen and change things. We've pulled those resources into the Missing Salmon Alliance in order to make a difference. On top of that, we are talking to NASCO, as Emma Hatfield said this morning. We're talking to governments, and we need to become aligned with governments so they support us and we support them. We need other NGOs, God forbid, the RSPB, to see the vision that we're trying to provide to take forward. We need to work with Fishery Management Scotland and all of the fishery boards in order to make a difference. We need to persuade industry to see that they have a role to play. Marcus Janssen spoke about shuffle. I was screaming from the back, saying to him, Get aquaculture involved, get whiskey involved, get renewables involved, get wind and hydro, get agriculture, get forestry, get them involved. This morning, Peter Williams from INEOS, they've demonstrated they're involved. These are all industries that are benefiting from our great rivers, but they're giving nothing back. We need to persuade them to put, put their um, elbow to the wheel and get on with it. So... My key message is, we've started with the NGOs, but let's get everybody involved. Let's create a mega alliance. Charles Darwin, he collected the evidence of evolution. And against all the odds, he persuaded the world of his theory. We need the science. We need the evidence. And today, you have heard about our work in that area. 
I just want to mention one project which hasn't been mentioned this morning, and it is kicking off this year. We're doing a massive acoustic tracking project on the west coast of Scotland as well, which is a three-year program, and Scottish government have come to the fore. Colin Adams is in the room here today from Marine Scotland, and it will show what's going on on the west coast. It starts off being directional, and we want it to show mortality as we move forward. But it's a huge piece of work. So thank you to the Scottish Government. If, if we emphatically prove that 50% of smolts are being lost before they exit the river system in the Murray Firth, we need to set about solving that problem. To give you a clue, it's estimated that three million smolts are going down seven rivers of the Murray Firth. That's 1.5 million smolts being lost in a one-month time period in river. I have no idea at this stage how, we might be able to, how many we might be able to save. But not to try would be a joke. We have to do it. Let me give you an example of the D. Bill Hicks mentioned the D in the dredging pro pro project. In 2017, the, sorry, 2016, the D board tagged approximately 100 smolts. There was a receiver at the front end of Aberdeen Harbour, and there was another receiver 850 metres away on the other side of Aberdeen Harbour. It took those smolts two days to get through Aberdeen Harbour, and 25% of the smolts were lost. In 2017, they did the same project. Of those smolts, 100 again went through. Instead of taking two days and losing 25% of the smolts, it took 45 minutes. And they lost 0% of those smolts as they went through. In 2018, they tagged them again, and dredging was happening again. As a result, we lost 25%, and it took them two days to get through Aberdeen Harbor. To equate that, and scientists will hate me for doing this because it, it doesn't work, but my job is to persuade you lot to get out there and become disciples. To, if you take the, the smolt run of the D, that's a million smolts going down that river. That's 250,000 more smolts going out to sea. That's 10,000 more salmon coming back. That makes a big difference, just that one thing. And we managed to stop the Marine Harbor Board from dredging in that river. Where am I? Right. What's the road ahead? Where are we headed? Where are we going with this? I haven't discussed this widely with the Missing Salmon Alliance executives, but I want to imagine what it might look like in 2022 when Mark Saunders said that the, the, the mysterious year of the salmon, which takes five years, comes to an end. First, it's worth remembering that in the north of Scotland, we have got populations, healthy populations, of salmon, like the Vestidulsa. They're in pristine environments. These fish are surviving. They are doing well. There are rivers in the UK that are in good nick. These rivers should not be touched. By 2022, this group of people should be trying to make them into strongholds. There should be strongholds, as Guido Ra says, in the north of Scotland, and we should have policies to make that happen. Second, we have great rivers, great, great rivers, that are in decline, the Tay, the Tweed, the Spey, the Tyne, just to name a few. Those rivers are in decline. What we need is we need defined remedial action by 2022 from all this work that we're doing here today to turn those rivers round. What is it that we need to do on those rivers in order to make them survive? What is all this evidence meaning? What is it that we're trying to do? Third, and it pains me to say this because I'm from the River Nith, there are rivers where populations are no longer viable. They have fallen below their viable limits. But the work that Peter Williams is discussing on the, on, on the Vesta Dulce and the work that's been going on on the Froome should give us plans and ideas and processes that we can use in order to try and bring those rivers back. So, by 2022, if we can raise the money, that is what we need to be starting to look at. So if we're sitting here in 2022 
and we haven't delivered that. Frankly, as Robbie said, nothing's changed and we've failed. Aha, uh -huh. the piggy bank. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we need money in the tank. And in my experience, in the friends and family round, and this is the friends and family round, for every pound you give us, we will get three times that from government and from corporates. And government are our friends. We need them to be on our side. They will make much bigger projects happen than we can make happen. But to get us there, and we, did, we started out on this road a while back, and we've raised a lot of money, but by gum, to do the projects you've heard of this morning, we need a lot of money. In fact, we've, we've raised approximately a million to a million and a half so far through this process. It is budgeted that we need three million, a million pounds a year, out to 2022. So we need a lot of money in order to get this family friends round complete so we can invest fully in the project and take things forward. And if you know anyone, or if someone isn't here, or if you think they should be there, get this bit of paper, write their name on the back of the bit of paper, and put your name and your contact details there so we can discuss how we can get into their wallet. Okay, so it's not just about you, it's also about the people who are missing, and there are loads of them. I'll come back to that little form in a minute. Finally, not quite finally, but nearly, I want to thank you. Um, be under no illusions how much your support is important, how much your momentum means to the Missing Salmon Alliance how much we need to tell the outside world that things are happening. Tony, um, Ch Tom Chenney this morning started to talk about that and getting the story right. So, on the Tom Chenney, and I thought his, his speech this morning really summed it up. So on that theme, the wild Atlantic salmon is as beautiful as the panda, it's as brave as the orangutan, it's as strong as the rhino, it's as large as the whale, and it absolutely beats the red kite hands down. <laughs> Thank you again, and please, please support this amazing fish with as much money and as much enthusiasm as you can. You can give me a round of applause now, but I haven't finished. <laughs>